Hi everyone, this is Kristen McCulley, and we're here today to help you understand how to use Zoom for doing online office hours. And now I'd like to introduce you to Asan and Jake. Hi everyone, I'm Asan and I'm here to learn how to use Zoom for office hour, as Kristen said. Hi everyone, I'm Jacob, and I'm also the same thing. Okay, so Zoom is UCLA's way of doing video and, vo and web conferencing. And if you're an authorized user, whatever that means, um, you get to host online meetings with up to 25 participants. So um, as TAs, we have that ability. And you can do some really cool stuff with Zoom. Um, but the most important thing for us is that you can make office hours available in the evening and at a distance, which is necessary for many students and helpful for many more who work, care for children, attend classes, or have other commitments through normal on-campus in-person office hours. It's also really great for any classes um, that involve using a computer, such as in our LS30 series courses, which the three of us work in, we are doing computer programming. Um, you can talk and do video conferencing, so you as the TA and other students can help a student with their own particular question. You can do screen sharing, and then you can annotate the screen share. You can chat with text, and you can separate into breakout rooms to have smaller groups discuss specific questions. Okay, so first let's talk about, <laughs> yep, there's some chatting with text. So first let's talk about how you set it up. So I'm gonna go ahead and share my screen. And close some stuff that you don't really need to see. Um, okay, so now you can see um, the website ucla.zoom.us. And this is the website you go to to join um, the Zoom program at UCLA. So if you haven't joined it before, you go here and log in, and then you'll get an account and you can download the Zoom software. Um, and there's some really good information right here. It's documentation about how to use Zoom. So, really useful. But we're going to talk more about um, how to use Zoom for more um, teaching pedagogical purposes in this house. So, if you want to add a Zoom office at work to your CCLE, um, page. Now all three of us are TAs, so we're not going to add it to the main course web page, we're going to add it to our own TA website. So as you can see here, I already have a TA website. But if you don't, <coughs> oh, sorry, the way you do that is you go to control panel right here, and then you go to TA sites. Thing in the course that it wants to cooperate. Yeah. And you can click by your name and that'll create your TA site. And I already created mine, so I'm going to go to my TA site. And then you can go to turn editing on and add a Zoom meeting. So, Kristen's online office hour. And there's a um, whole bunch of options you can do here. Um, I'm going to use the same um, URL and everything, same location for all of my online office hours throughout the quarter. So, I'm going to call it a recurring meeting. Um, I don't see any reason to have a password, but I suppose you could if you wanted to. Um, I'm going to allow both myself as host and the participants to have a video on if they want to. I'm going to allow people to join over the telephone, over voice over IP, over computer. And I'm going to allow um, participants to join the meeting before I get there in case they want to meet separately on their own. 
I'm not going to do any grading. I don't need this. I don't need to restrict access to anyone. So I'm going to go ahead and save that. Yay. So here's the URL that I give to my students. And I could press start meeting right there and that would open it. But since I'm already in a meeting right now, I'm not going to do that. So now if I go back to my TA website, it shows uh, my meeting right here. And if you want to delete these other things here, you can either um, delete them or hide them, which is what I have going right now. Um, so that's how you get it to show up in your TA website. Uh, but if it's not important, once you've just installed the Zoom page, you can click meetings and you can use whatever um, hours you want. Oh, Asan has a question. Hi, yes, it's just uh, a quick one. Do they, when they click on the Kristen's online office hour, do they need to make an account or because today I could come for a meeting even though we, I didn't have an account on Zoom? Um, I've never actually been a participant, but yes, if you can do it, then that's what they can because I gave you the um, website address for my own um, online office hour. Uh huh. Thanks. Okay. Hopefully, I won't have another copy of it. Um. So, can you guys see my Zoom? Count here. Yeah. It's just, that's a yes, I think. Yeah. Okay. So if you want to make any edit any changes, you can go back and do that there. Um, you can always go there to start the meeting if you're not in process for one. Um, and then you can also use this information here to do any meeting you want. Um, but it, not necessary. It won't necessarily show up on CCLE if you decide to use that one. Um, so that's setting it up. That's how you get the link. Um, you can also get the if students might want to join by going over the telephone if they're not in front of a computer. Um, once you join, there's a menu at the top. Which you may or you may not be able to see on mine. I'm not sure. And if you click on more and then audio options, um, and then you click on join by phone, it'll give you the phone numbers that you can call and the meeting ID. And you can even have a participant ID if you want, but I think you just have to give the students the phone number and the meeting ID. And then they'll have to install a plugin to make it work. And then when they join, it'll actually send you an um, email so that you know that people are in your meeting. So that's all about setting it up. Um, Usually want to you want to have students do the screen share so that you can see them typing code or something. Um, for our class, we use um, SageMath Cloud. So it's a really good situation um, to have students that you can see the students writing the code. And then once they have it open, you can draw over it. So you can annotate by going to the um, top menu and it says annotate. Um, and you can draw in all different colors and sizes and um, other stuff. So like I can write pi. Um, you can do kinds of boxes and things if you want to or um, circles or ovals. The one thing that I haven't found that you can do with annotating, unfortunately, is typing into the um, annotation so that you could just type and not have to actually like write with your mouse. Um, the way I got around that was that usually when I wanted to type, I could just type on the background application that was showing in the background. Um, oh. Sure. Jake, do you want to show us what Sage looks like if you share if you share your screen? So basically I would tell him, Jake, go ahead and share your screen, and then he'll click on share screen. And I can't 
cannot share oh. stop my screen share while you're sharing. Okay, so in order so then I have to press stop share. And then I can share mine. Yay. Cool. And now I can draw all over his screen. I don't know why it keeps making me think. And I can be like, hey Jake, look at this line right here. Whoa, I'm looking at the line you're pointing at. <laughs> um, I can also request remote control of his computer so I can take over his computer. And so I would request it and then he'd have to give permission. No, just kidding. <laughs> he can have it. Oh, there you go. Oh, you. Yay, so I have control of Jake's computer. So I can now start typing in here. No hands. Um, you know, two times two and make it work. So if he has a problem in his code, I can actually start typing. Although it's probably better not to do that as much as you can. Try to get the student to do it. So now I'm going to give up remote control and let Jake have it back. Thanks, Kristen. <laughs> um, so yeah, that's annotation. Um, I, let me go ahead and share my screen again. Um, I, I'm often sharing screen with something that I have in a PDF. So for example, if a student has a question about their lab assignment, I can pull up the assignment and they can see what the question is. Or maybe something in the textbook, we want to talk about a particular figure in the textbook. Or maybe a practice exam question. And so because I'm in a PDF reader that allows me to do typewriting, I can type things in there. So, you know, I can say equilibria, okay, that didn't help. Equilibria is stable at, you know, okay, I don't actually remember this problem, but you can type there um, and then use the annotation to do other stuff on top of that. and just point things out, say. Um, because you're just showing whatever's on your screen, you can also show things like a PowerPoint presentation um, or even a Word document or something online. Um, and now, um, before we get into breakout rooms, just a quick tip, one of the first things you want to tell students is if they're in a loud place, make sure that they have their microphone off unless they are actually speaking at the time. Um, if it slows down, have people turn their video off. A lot of students won't have that turned on to begin with because they don't necessarily want you to be able to see them at home. Um, and sometimes it seems like you're just talking to one student and the other ones are just listening and, hey, Jake disappeared. Oh, there he is. Um, so you can do things just like you would in regular office hours to get them to participate by getting them to each answer a small part of the question and to help each other. Um, so now let's try breakout rooms. So this requires a newer version of Zoom. So if you haven't installed it recently, go ahead and update it. Uh, so if you have a newer version of Zoom and you're the host that's part of the meeting, you'll have an option at the bottom right that says breakout session. And so, I can assign one person to a breakout session. And for some reason, I can't assign Jake, but Hassan is in here. I'll start all over again. Oh, now I have Hassan and Jake each in one session. So let's start in different sessions. So it is just ask them to join these sessions. So now I'm the only one in the main, but I can click on breakout sessions and go join them. And then I'm going to go join Jake. Okay. Okay, this one should be here in a second. Okay, guys, is there anything else we should talk about? I can't think of anything right now. Um, I guess everything has been covered. 
Jake, is there anything you want to talk about your own experiences using Zoom for online office hours? Um, with the breakout rooms, I feel like a lot of the problems I've had in the past are solved because I wanted students to work together. Um, they've been it. This feature totally allows that. The uh, chat I found can be kind of helpful if students um, have a question that's like not pertinent for that second. They want to ask and get to it in a little bit. They can put it up on the chat so that you can get to it later. Um, yeah. It's also useful if some students don't have a microphone or they're in too out of place. Exactly, yeah. They can still ask their questions, come up with whatever they, you know, they want to talk about or whatever. Cool. Yeah, I've had a lot of great experiences using Zoom for my online office hours. Um, we don't recommend that all the TAs do all of their on office hours online, but depending on how useful it is for the class, um, maybe a quarter or a third of the TA office hours could be online, um, particularly for the LS30 class where um, you're working on computer code and this actually allows everyone to see the code all at once. Um, yeah, students ask a lot of questions. They're pretty comfortable with it. They really like it. Um, I've had big groups of students joining my online office hours. Um, I think we're good. Thanks for joining us, guys. Go Bruins! Thank <laughs> you.